Our first speaker is uh, Luis Adame, um, and he's founder and CEO of Moss Earth. Moss is an environmental fintech company that allows for carbon credits to be purchased and carried as an investment. And with that, I'll hand it over to Luis. Hi, everyone. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, it's a, a true honor uh, to be here um, at the conference uh, for the first time. Um, a lot of, uh, I think, the, the challenges that we face as humankind have been you know, quite well explained over here. Uh, but I want to you know, bring our story, you know, our history, uh, uh, for the foundation of Moss. Um, as an example, uh, maybe of, or as a different perspective, perhaps, um, you know, in the sense that I am not, you know, uh, a forest engineer. I am not, uh, you know, a carbon guy. I am not um, a climate expert. I'm a, you know, quote unquote, traditional, or as I now call it, uh, dark side of finance guy. I worked for in traditional finance, meaning investment banking and hedge fund management uh, for 18 years. Um, at school, you know, at college, I studied um, uh, industrial engineering and, and economics. So I really had nothing to do uh, or not much of an interest. Well, I, I, I didn't really have much to do career-wise. Uh, uh, sorry with, uh, uh, you know, climate change or combating climate change. Um, but half of my family lives in what is called Pantanal, which is the area south of the Amazon forest. So that's where my connection with, you know, the environment comes from. I used to spend uh, my vacations um, and summer times over there. So through my family, you know, cousins, nephews, uh, uncles and aunts, etc. I became keenly aware of, you know, I had a firsthand experience of the incredible um, and terrible um, spike in the Amazon forest deforestation uh, under the current uh, Brazilian government. Uh, just so people, you know, have uh, an idea of the dimension of the, you know, terrible disaster that is going on in Brazil right now um, in 2019 and in 2020. Um, in 2019, with the new government, deforestation rates doubled uh, year on year. So, you know, that started to, to you know, uh, concern me very much when I spoke with my family. Uh, I started hearing more and more about how the smoke of the, until then, incredibly far um, agricultural frontier was coming closer and closer uh, to the Amazon forest and to Pantanal, to where they lived. Uh, and I had two, you know, main events in my life that, you know, led me to um, get out of traditional finance and, and, you know, try to set up a business that would foment the carbon credit system and via the use of technology, try to combat climate change. Uh, the first one, my daughter was born, as we who have kids know that changes, you know, our perspective, uh, I think, for the planet that we're going to leave, leave for our kids. And I had not, I didn't have much of an idea of what the scenario would be like uh, for the world uh, if we keep, uh, you know, emitting greenhouse gases or polluting um, as we have, you know, uh, uh, in um, um, most recent years. Um, you know, the numbers are, you know, some of it has been said here, but maybe for those who haven't. Um, you know, heard about it, uh, um, you know, um, or have any idea of the numbers, we as humankind, we are emitting 55 billion metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year. Uh, this number 12 years ago was 25 billion and 300 years ago was zero. So we went from zero to 25 billion in 300 years and from 25 billion to 55 billion in 12. So we're obviously, you know, this is obviously growing exponentially, um, mostly in the past 10 years due to the growth of China. And the scenario in 50 years, if we don't do anything, if we keep the status quo, is uh, for the world, when my daughter's 52, 
you know, she's two years old now, um, the world will be completely uninhabitable, um, or at least the tropical zones will be uninhabitable because the temperature will be of 60, 65 degrees Celsius. That's around 140, 150 Fahrenheit. Um, we're talking about, you know, all cities by the shore uh, being underwater. And most gravely, or more importantly, perhaps, uh, the world's food production will fall uh, by as much as 50%. Uh, that's the P50, right? So that's the most likely scenario. Uh, I think, and I, I, you know, I started learning about all this uh, or reading about it and researching uh, by reading uh, The Uninhabitable Earth. Now we have, you know, Bill Gates' book, but uh, both criticize and especially The Uninhabitable Earth, which if you haven't read, I highly recommend it. Um, both criticize uh, the, you know, failure of science of being alarmist enough, uh, and especially of the media, right? It, it's, it's sort of absurd that we are potentially facing, uh, you know, the end of the world as we know it, uh, or of our lifestyle, and perhaps with not too small probability, uh, you know, the complete annihilation of us as, as a species on, on Earth, uh, they were facing that scenario potentially in 50 years, if we don't do anything. And, you know, the average person down the street doesn't really know about this. Um, so uh, I started thinking, well, if there's one problem to tackle, it's definitely, you know, combating climate change. I mean, there's, you know, in, in my mind, there was nothing more important than that. Uh, and also as Bill Gates perhaps also realized and described in his book, we have a tremendous urgency, right? We have only five to 10 years to reduce uh, emissions at least by half so that we are, uh, we, we fall under the scenario of, of an increase of one and a half to two degrees Celsius instead of, uh, you know, the three degrees Celsius, uh, which is implied by the status quo and would lead to that terrible scenario that I described. And I started studying more and more about it. And uh, I found out as I went along, about the carbon credit system. And um, some people here have described it, but uh, it fascinated me as a, as a trader, you know, by profession, uh, a commodity trader in that uh, specifically, that this is the world's first digital commodity, you know, carbon credits. It's basically defined the same way globally. It's a digital certificate, right? That proves that the emission of uh, one metric ton of, of CO2 was avoided. And yet it still trades by and large uh, analogically. Um, you know, uh, people, you know, when Apple wants to go carbon neutral, they calculate their uh, carbon inventory, but they call a broker in Europe by the phone. You know, they, they, they have a phone call with a broker in Europe that has a phone call with a broker in Brazil that has a phone call with a broker in some forestry, you know, uh, red uh, carbon uh, project. And then they call each other all around and a transaction takes six months to one year to happen. And it's opaque, it's over the counter. So you don't really have, uh, um, you know, as much transparency as one should have in, in you know, this incredibly important uh, system. And uh, it's not, you know, the best, you know, possible system as Bill Gates highlights in his book. Um, you know, there are, flaws with it, of course. Uh, but I think the pros outweigh uh, uh, the cons. And given the urgency of us having to reduce emissions as fast as possible, it's really the best we have out there. It's, it's sort of like capitalism or democracy in, 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 in my view. Um, so I started thinking, well, this is the solution. You know, how come this, you know, was developing really well with the creation of the, you know, Chicago uh, the CCX, the carbon exchange, and, you know, a bunch of uh, developments and, and a bunch of initiatives like the ecosystem marketplace, you know, for, to give more transparency on the transactions. How come, you know, this is still largely unknown, uh, you know, as a solution. Um, so I started thinking, uh, you know, and reading about it, and to me it became quite clear, and it, if I can share my screen here, um, I want to show one very, very important. Uh, oh, uh, it, it, am I allowed to, to share my, my, my slides here? 
Oh, well, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll just speak about it. Uh, there was one event, demographic event that changes basically everything for uh, the demand of carbon credits relative to, to, to supply and should lead not a temporary squeeze, but a structural squeeze and lead to much, much higher prices, which are necessary for the incentives to be in place for you know, a reduction in global emissions. And that is the fact that uh, millennials two years ago became the most important demographic group in the world. You know, millennials now uh, make up uh, for 30% uh, of the global population, 50% of the uh, global workforce and in five years in, uh, or in less than four years in 2025, there'll be 70% of the world's workforce. That shift from you know, baby boomers being the most important demographic group in the world to millennials led to a, a gigantic shift in, in values of investors and of uh, consumers. It's not a coincidence that you know, we're having this you know, spike in uh, uh, neutral pledges, um, you know, from the largest companies in the world. And it's not a coincidence that we're having, you know, gigantic flows into ESG funds. This is because millennials care about the environment because they're going to inherit, they are the ones that are going to inherit the world. Uh, probably most of the people on this call will be at the end of, you know, our lives, myself included, uh, by the time if we don't do anything and, and the world reaches that, you know, terrible, uh, um, scenario that I described. So um, I, you know, started studying the demand and supply for carbon credits and realized that, you know, most of the companies will buy from this tiny, tiny part of the global market, which is called the voluntary market. You know, more than 99% of the world's 12 billion um, tons in, in annual offsets are in regulated markets or jurisdictions, you know, like uh, the European ETS or Australia or New Zealand or California. Uh, and you have a tiny, tiny part in the voluntary market, but that's where marginal demand is going to. Because of course, if you're faced with, a, uh, with the option of, you know, if you're Microsoft and you're faced with the option of buying a regulated carbon credit, you know, from Europe at 45 bucks uh, or, you know, um, a carbon credit uh, or an offset from California in the high teens or you know low twenties, or you know uh, a voluntary carbon uh, offset uh, from uh, a project in the Amazon that you know saves the local fauna, protects the local fauna and flora, uh, leads to all sorts of benefits for local communities. You know, uh, prevents deforestation and, and climate change. Of course, then and for you know five or six dollars uh, wholesale prices. Of course, the marginal demand is going to flow to that. So. With that in mind, I said, well, this is gonna, this has the potential of being a, a, an epic, um, you know, uh, squeeze. Uh, how do I get exposure to, to this on, 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 you know, for me personally, uh, uh, you know, as, as a speculative, you know, uh, uh, trade maybe. And I realized that there weren't that many, actually there were none, there were no, you know, spaces out there that would offer this and would offer especially for companies, the opportunity to uh, not only build strategic positions, but also uh, to uh, uh, you know compensate when they when they wanted to, you know, not when when they bought immediately the carbon credit. And I also thought that the existing compensation companies uh, or solutions out there, uh, offsetting uh, solutions out there. Um, were not transparent enough. Uh, and I thought the benefit of putting this transaction on the blockchain, the transaction of acquiring carbon credits uh, would be incredibly valuable in a sector that has fallen in, in you know, discredit in the past due to, you know, uh, frauds and scams of, you know, quite a, you know, a, 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 a small number of, of players, but still, you know, fell into some discredit. So, this is how we created Moss. What Moss does is it's a, a global carbon uh, retailer. Uh, and uh, what we basically do is we're following the amazon.com model and you know, in the nineties and our vision is to follow Amazon through all its steps until it became a two-sided marketplace 
you know, and a global retailer. We want to be a global environmental hub. Uh, so just as Amazon began in the 90s, buying books at wholesale prices because of, you know, purchases in large volumes and selling at retail prices and capturing the spread with the advantage of being digital at the time when, you know, most bookstores were bricks and mortar, mortar um, you know, replace carbon, the word carbon credit or, you know, those two words with, or replace books with carbon credits and replace digital with blockchain and you have moss. So what we do is we buy carbon credits from mostly forestry projects, um, conservation projects in the Amazon forest in Brazil and in Peru. Uh, we sell, you know, to both individuals and, and companies with the advantage nowadays of being uh, blockchain, which would be similar to amazon.com's advantage of Please. being digital at a time when everybody was uh, physical. So that's what we do and, uh, you know, uh, uh, I appreciate any questions you may have. Uh, thank you very much. Louis, thanks for, thanks for that. Um, we have one question um, that has come up here that I think would be useful probably for some, uh, for people to hear, which is how is carbon credit measured? Um, what's one worth? Um, just for people who are just entering the space. Absolutely. So one carbon credit is a digital certificate that proves that either a company or an environmental project a company in most regulated markets, which are 99% of the global volume, as I said, out of the 12 billion tons, metric tons, or $250 billion, you have 200 and, or you have 11.9 out of the 12 billion in regulated market. So it's either a company in regulated markets or an environmental project in the voluntary market that get certifies that through its activity, it has avoided the emission of one metric ton of CO2. It's a mouthful to say, it's a digital certificate that proves that a company or a project has avoided pollution in a way. Uh, and that's the same definition the world over. Great. And what, what, you... differs, what differs between the markets, there are 61 protocols out there. Um, it's basically you know, the list of requirements to, to, to prove that, that avoidance of, of that emission of, of one metric ton, but one carbon credit is equivalent to an avoided uh, uh, emission of one ton uh, the, all over the world. That's great. Um, one last question before we wrap up. Um, are you only focusing on the Amazon forests? We are uh, agnostic in terms of protocols or um, or types of credits uh, we have transacted in biomass, in methane flaring, in uh, you know CDM, the UN systems or Kyoto Pro Protocol system uh, uh, credits. Uh, but we are focused now on on the Amazon forest just because you know we believe it's the most effective way in the very very short term to you know create. Uh, higher incentives for you know to to fight deforestation, and because we're Brazilian and you know it's it's um, it's home, it's what we are most comfortable with, um, and we think you know by coincidence uh, it also happens to be the credit that we believe is most urgent for us to buy right now. 